Hey everyone, Michael with Impact Reviews. Um, I wanted to provide a little bit of an update on this project, which uh, I had recently made some video uh, videos of. This is the Christensen Arms Classic 300 Rum, 300 Remington Ultra Magnum. Let's see if I can bring that in a little bit closer. Uh, so obviously hunting kind of oriented rifle. Uh, that is super lightweight. I think it comes in under eight pounds. With the optic, it's gonna be a little bit closer to 10, but um, still extremely lightweight as a as a long range uh, rig, you know, uh, goes. And it's topped off with the Huskama uh, 5 to 20 LR, which has been has been kind of fun to uh, work with. It's uh, five to 20 by 50, I should say. And so slightly smaller objective bell for um, kind of optics within this category, but it does, I think, save a little bit on the weight, which is I think for a kind of a, a hunting rifle something that you would be um, hiking around with which uh, when we're hunting we're doing quite a bit of hiking sorry I've got some noise back here Let's see if I can quiet that down um, is is definitely appreciated so um, we just got the rifle in I don't know probably a month a month or so ago and so I did a whole kind of break-in process with the barrel and now we started uh, started the reloading process. So um, let me just explain sort of the basic com components. This is uh, this is the Norma 300 rum brass, and uh, the bullet that uh, my brother chose is the Hornady ELDX. So that's like their X for expansion. It's their hunting line, uh, 178 grain. So this should be screaming uh, in terms of velocities. I, I haven't I haven't chronoed these yet. I was just doing ladder testing today, and I generally don't chrono while I'm doing the ladder testing um, but I'm guessing we'll be somewhere near 34 3500 uh, feet a second not entirely certain and so the the ladder test today I tend I tend to start on sort of the lower end of things we started at let me see if I got this right 90 oh sorry I forgot the powder um, the powder is Rotumbo so uh, Hodgson Rotumbo Seemed like a tried and true place to start. I've never loaded for the 300 rum, the 300 Remington Ultra Magnum. The biggest I've reloaded for is my 300 Win Mag, which I really do like, uh, and I've had a lot of great luck with the uh, like with the Burger 230 OTM Tacticals, um, and also with the 225 Hornady. Uh, ELDMs, but I had never kind of gone this big as it were. So we went with the Rotumbo. I, I just, Hodgson powders have always delivered for me with Varget, um, H4350, uh, and one other that I'm forgetting right now. But in any case, so we started down at 96.5 grains and the with the primers are CCI 250s, by the way, so the large rifle magnums. I think that's all the components. Uh, so anyways, we started down at 96.5 grains, which is, that's a lot of powder <laughs> when you're used to loading, you know, in the upper 60s and 70 grains for the 300 rum or, you know, uh, uh, 40, uh, uh, I think my, Six millimeter Creedmoor, Creedmoor is, uh, 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 oh, I just forgot. Um, maybe 47.1, I think that's right. Um, in any case, memory slipped there. But so that's a lot of powder, right? We're starting at, down at 96.5, and then I reloaded up to 99.5, or I should say I should shot up to 99.5. Um, I had no pressure signs, um, sort of crawling my way up toward 99.5, but when I did hit 99.5 grains of the Rotumbo, I started to get sticky bolt and a little bit of, little bit of cratering, and so I just sort of stopped it there. Um, we'll certainly be able to work up a load you know, uh, under 99.5. And so I don't like to take, you know, risks on those, on those kinds of things. But here, uh, so let me show you a bit of the results. I'm gonna have to relocate the camera a bit. And I'm sure the angle is not going to make this completely perfect view. So I'll just walk, I'll walk through the results. So this results of the ladder test done uh, 200 yards. Uh, started, it worked in um, half grain increments, so 96.5, 97, 97.5, 98, 98.5, 99, and then 99.5, which is where I stopped. Um, in general, and I'm completely open to critique on this, but in general what I like to do is start in half grain increments, and as I start to uh, find accuracy nodes or consistency nodes in uh, ladder testing, I will then refine from there messing with, um, not just with grainage, but especially with seating depth. And so uh, these 
Um, these are seated at uh, uh, at least uh, the, oh, the overall length was 3.3 inch 3.725 I think was the overall length um, on these. So anyways, uh, we started at 96.5 down here at the bottom. That's that's the uh, one. No, you can't even see it, can you? Right down here uh, at the very bottom one, 96.5, 97. So you start to see some horizontal stringing here. Uh, 97, 97.5. So 97 and 97.5 are vertically effectively the same. Um, and then uh, you get a significant jump up after 97.5 up to 98. 98, 98.5, 99, and 99.5. And so this is actually the node right here that kind of interests me, sorry again about that background noise, that kind of interests me the most, especially 98 and 98.5. Uh, vertically, these are all, um, these four shots right here, I'm sorry, these three shots, so 99, 99.5 and 98.5 are all 0.5 inches from one another. Again, this, these were taken at 200 yards. Um, and so vertically, that's, uh, to my mind, to my mind, that's these, uh, uh, these uh, ladder tests are most important for sort of the vertical, um, to see where the vertical dispersion is. Again, I'm happy to be uh, corrected by that. So I don't, I'm not as concerned by the fact that, you know, between 90, uh, between 99.5 and 98.5, there's 1.5 inches of, ver of horizontal difference. Uh, vertically, there's only half inch difference. Um, uh, again, these are edge taken at 200 yards. And so when I look at um, a ladder test like this, and please offer suggestions if you interpret this differently, I'm mostly interested in this one grain node between 99.5 and 98.5, which are these uh, shots right here. Uh, half inch vertical difference and then 1.5 inch horizontally. Um, again, the way that I've done these in the past, I've I found that it's most important to consider the uh, vertical issue as opposed to, um, uh, well, I guess in, in terms of priority of uh, prior, prioritizing the data, I tend to look more at the vertical than the horizontal, but maybe I'm wrong about that and maybe you all can help me with that. But in any case, this is the initial ladder test after, um, after a barrel break-in procedure. And uh, these are the results uh, using the Hornady ELDX 178 grain, of course, in 30 caliber. Uh, the uh, Norma 300 rum brass, uh, Rotumbo, and CCI 250. So based on what I'm seeing uh, today, I, I am pretty confident that we're going to be able to make this a really, uh, really effective hunting weapon. Um, and it's, you know, the 300 rum is, is one of those rifles that is basically good to go for all, um, all of North America's large game. So this should be a, should be a great, uh, should be a great rifle once it gets all dialed in, once we uh, finally have that load worked up. But from my perspective, the next step is to kind of work within this node between 99.5 and 98.5, 98.5 here, and uh, to begin refining that load, especially around seating depth. And then maybe we'll play a little bit, uh, play a little bit with um, grain, grains as well but uh, you all can, again you can help me with this but my inclination when I see sort of a three shot node like this where you have very you know minimal vertical dispersion half an inch my inclination is uh, to go sort of for the middle and so I do know that at 99.5 I, I do get a bit some signs of pressure like I said sticky bolt a uh, tiny bit of cratering in the primer and so my inclination is to go for uh, uh, sort of the middle of the road so 90 uh, probably maybe 99 or 90 uh, maybe 98 uh, Point five, something like that. So that's at least my inclination, um, just because uh, I think today it's in the 50, it's 50 degrees, and so um, it's Arizona, and you know if you're hunting in a warmer time of year, then potentially the um, ammo uh, is is going to change in temperature as well. And so I my inclination is to sort of um, 
give myself and give the ammunition a little bit of space, especially if uh, in a place like Arizona where you have uh, fluctuations in um, external temperatures, which of course result in fluctuations in ammunition temperature and changes in pressure as well. And so definitely interested in looking for those uh, kind of uh, those nodes where the ammunition is most uh, resistant to those kinds of uh, shifts. So anyways, uh, that's the that's the next step. Well, that's the second step, I should say, in uh, my journey with this rifle. I'm hoping to have some more refined loads this coming week or the, or the week after that, and then I'll provide another, uh, uh, provide another update. So, alright everyone, uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching.